this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, oh, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let, let it shine. shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let that hatred blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Let that hatred blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, 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 let it shine. Let it shine. Happy Easter. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Happy Easter. Like, I was so excited about getting ready for today. And, like, I'm glad that the, the dye from the eggs came off of my fingers so I didn't have to explain that this morning. So... It's a new day, new fingers, clean ones too, exciting. So we are so grateful you are here. Welcome to Unity Spiritual Center of Woodstock. My name is Reverend Mary Patrice Wendt. I am the minister here. I'm Reverend Tom Wendt, and it's what a joy to share this Easter morning with you. Thank you for, for being here and for adding to the energy in this wonderful, wonderful room. Thank you. And there's going to be a lot of moving parts today and a lot of moving people, so I will be watching them as much as you are <laughs> to make sure, make sure everybody has the space and the time to get where they need to be. It's mm -hmm. been an exciting day to prepare for, so be ready. Let's go ahead and start with a prayer. Mm -hmm. Let's take a deep breath. Mm. Divine Spirit, orchestrator of all things, all events in my life, in the world, in, the, in this time, in place, in space, all the gifts that come to me and through me, thank you for this day. Thank you for the rise of spirit as we celebrate this amazing moment in our faith's history coming into our own, into that divine awareness and essence of who we are. We celebrate with joy and, and giving and sharing these moments together. Thank you for the knowing that there is that presence with us and in us all at all times and in all places, whether we are in the midst of a struggle or whether we are celebrating that resurrection moment within. Thank you for each and every soul that it is here celebrating with us and for the space of the people, for the people that are, have prepared for this day to make it the most amazing experience that can be thought of. We are here. Just feel the presence of the joy and the love in this room. Breathe that in. And we say, thank you, God. Let it be so that all things come together for the highest outcome we can imagine. Let it be so. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Let's begin with our five unity principles. This is the basis of all we are and all we believe in. Together, please. There is only, only one, one presence, presence and one power in the universe, universe and, and in, in my life, life 
God, God the, the good, good omnipotence, the Christ spirit Christ lives within me. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. I experience God's presence and power through prayer and meditation. I put my faith into action by demonstration. Unity is a movement that is about being more spiritual than religious. That means that we truly take in the idea that when you were created, you were created in the image and likeness of God, that you were, in, you were gifted the power, the presence, the understanding, the awareness of being an extension of God. We know that there is that internal guidance system within you that has the right way, the right path, the right idea for your total unfoldment. We know that you have within you the wisdom, the understanding, the awareness to do and to choose where to be, how to be, who to be, and yet sometimes we forget how that is or we forget who we are. This ministry is about supporting you in remembering who you are, remembering who you want to be and how you want to show up, which is so totally unique than anyone else here. So we don't tell you that these are certain prayers you need to say. These are the words or the ideas you have to hold. What we do is try to introduce you to tools and ideas that resonate with you and help you make the choices that are right for you. We are here to support your divine growing and glowing and knowing. We let it be. We let it be so. At this time, I would like to introduce our tech team, who is also part of our music team today. So first, as our tech team, Mr. George Mulligano. Hello, George. Mr. Joe Joswiak. And I believe Miss Kim Joswiak is part of the team as well. And then as our music team today, who we want to thank, we have our USCW choir. Thank you so much. That's Sue, Gail, Mary, Carol, and Jackie. Woo. And, 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 and Donna. Oh, and, Donna, and, you're not on and, the other side. No, Donna and Wendy who's ushering, so she's oh, reading. Okay, she's on Wendy duty. and Donna too. They're obviously covering all different aspects of our service today. And then up here, we keep going, <laughs> George again. <laughs> <laughs> our music leader who orchestrated all of this, Mrs. Lori Gray Mulligano. And on the other side of Lori is Alpha Stewart Jr. And in the back here, not to be missed, Mr. Dave Purcell. And one more. And? Joe. <gasps> oh no, I cannot forget you. And on our tech team as well, Mr. Joe Joswiak. <laughs> Woo! He's here we go. Did I get everybody? Yes, you did. Okay, I'll turn off. <laughs> we, got, we have a flash mob too. <laughs> Take it away.
don't hear that everywhere on Easter morning, huh? So let's take a few moments to take all that in and remember that we are the heart and you are the hands and you are the voice of spirit on earth. So, dear friends, we enter into a time of guided meditation this morning. 
If you're new to the practice, it's merely a time to relax and let go of any thoughts that don't bring you freedom and authenticity. Many here will close their physical eyes during this time, but it's up to you. This is your time. Your time to be with what we call the Christ within, that divine presence that breathes life into each and every one of us. So relax, dear friends. Allow your body, your mind to truly hear the word relax. Surrender to it and breathe into it. Just relax. We are always thinking, so there's No need to worry about where your thoughts go. Let them go where they will. And be aware of what calls to you, through you. Let your shoulders relax just a bit. Feel at home, for indeed you are. At home with the presence of the divine within. Just be with it. Just be with it. Let us have the freedom to be at peace right now. There is nothing in us or around us in this moment that does not support peace. Breathe and surrender to peace. Oh. May you be peaceful. The peace that passes all understanding. I am peace. Mm. My heart and my mind are at peace. Every inhale and every exhale brings more peace to my awareness. I am relaxed and I am peaceful. Hmm, it feels good.
I am comfortable being alone with myself in peace. Oh yeah. I do not wish to leave this state. And so I choose not to. Today, all day, I am peace. And as we bring ourselves back to this <clears throat> beautiful sanctuary of peace, aware of the peaceful souls around us, we may want to wiggle our toes and our fingers and open our eyes and be so grateful for the peace that will be us throughout this day. And so it is. Amen. Thank you. Wow. Easter Sunday. Oh, yeah. It's one of my favorite holidays because, you know, Easter Sunday is like this, this celebration. It's the end of all of the, the really tough stories that lead up to it. It's like, the, it's, like, it's like the open door to just feeling really good after hearing all of these really uncomfortable moments in our master teacher's life. And I just love it because it's spring and... People do all these really cool activities, and, you know, the, I went back and thought, well, okay, so why do we do some of the things that we do today? Why do we have Easter egg hunts on Easter? What does it have to do with Easter Sunday? I mean, come on. What has, there's got to be some reason for it. Some would say, and some, maybe today, some of you are going to have an Easter egg hunt. Maybe you had one yesterday or are planning to have one soon. But the, the egg is said, in, for some, is said to be the symbol of new life. And it's been associated with pagan festivals to celebrate spring. From the Christian perspective, Easter eggs are said to symbolize Jesus' emergence from the tomb and resurrection. How did it start, though? Some suggest that the origins of egg hunts date back to the 16th century when Pro Protestant reformer Martin Luther organized egg hunts for his congregants. The men... Oh, pay attention now. The men would go and hide the eggs for the women and children to find. Have you, have you done that yet? This was meant to reflect the story of the resurrection in which the women discovered the empty tomb. We didn't do Easter egg hunts in my house growing up. I had eight Brothers and sisters, how many eggs do you think they'd need to make? I mean, really. But we did do Easter basket hunts, where we get up on the Easter morning, and that was the first thing on the list to do. Don't worry about church yet. I would make sure I was up really early so I could go find my basket. And of course, you know, in the, when I was younger, they would be pretty easy to find. You know, you just have maybe three or four steps and ta-da, there's your basket, right? Ooh, I can't wait. And, and you sit down and, and you're just so absorbed with this, this gift of all these colorful things. And wow, you can't wait to taste every single thing in there except for the egg. 
itself. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. That somebody else can have. <laughs> but the first thing that came off the bunny was his ears. And then as I got older and started looking for my basket, it wasn't as easy to find. I had to work a little harder. Like, wait. Sometimes I get frustrated. Sometimes it was, I like, can you give me a hint? Just give me a hint where it is. I'll, just one little hint. And I'd keep looking and I'd look and I'd look and sometimes I would have my siblings look for me and help me, give me, give me a, you know, a push in the right direction. You know, the warm or cold game. Am I, am I warm? And I'd still, eventually I would find it and I'd sit there and it was, it was the same experience, just this pure joy. Look at all this sugar. <laughs> it was awesome. What else could there be that could be better to Easter? And I'd get older and, I, and I'd watch my siblings go and look for their baskets and my oldest sibling, my oldest brother, he wasn't quite as enthusiastic about it at that point. You know, he was in his late teens, and it's like, uh, he, he would start looking, but if he couldn't find it right away, he stopped. And it seemed like this really uh, prime moment for my parents to make a statement, like to get a message to him, because it was almost always that his basket was hidden under his dirty laundry in his room. <laughs> which he would never look under. He was never going to look there. So he would just give up. He would just give up. Like, Psh, I don't need it anyway. He did really want it, but he didn't want to work that hard. And we just, you know, that morning would just be starting out with this joy of finding that moment where it's like, oh, I got it. I got my goal. I have, this is, there's nothing better than this moment, and, and I'm going to eat as much as I can before we go to church. But then we'd go to church. And, and that was fun, too, because we got to dress up, and we took up really pretty much a whole pew. And people would always look at us, there are that many of you? <laughs> but... Easter started with searching for the joy. Just for the record, everyone, I colored Easter eggs the other day. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm about to tell um, a non-factual story that <clears throat> contains a truth. Dad, what are you doing out there? Mom. Shh, I'm hiding Jeremy's Easter basket. Dad, his Easter basket? The kid's 16 years old. Mom, this is an age-appropriate Easter basket. I put in some thumb, a thumb drive instead of a chocolate bunny. I put in some burger coupons instead of jelly beans and a piece of software instead of those marshmallow chicks that he used to love. Dad says, oh, that's a good idea. Mom says, oh, I think he'll really appreciate that. After finding his Easter basket, Jeremy says to himself, darn it, no candy. <laughs> <laughs> now, I thought that was a cute Easter story that has absolutely no bearing on what I'm about to say, but I needed to say it. <laughs> You know, most of us are familiar with the traditional Easter narrative uh, regarding Jesus' resurrection. The earthquake quake rolls away the stone and the tomb is empty and somewhere, whether it be an angel or a man in the tomb or some people who just arrive or, or appear, they say that Jesus has risen. The fact is the Gospels don't agree at all on the resurrection story. Um, what happened on that time that we refer to his resurrection. Uh, and that conversation is for another time and another talk. 
But what I can say for sure is that the story of what happened 2,000 years ago, whichever one you want to tell, happens to each of us on an everyday basis. See, the Bible is our story. It's our story. I recall when Reverend Dr. James Trapp, who was the CEO at the time of the Association of Unity Churches, now called Unity Worldwide Ministries, saying, and I quote, resurrection follows crucifixion. No life escapes this process. The Easter story is about an old way being crucified so something new can be born. This is not a once in a lifetime event. It happens over and over in our lives. When someone experiences a divorce, the death of a partner, loses a job, or experiences a shift in external circumstances, an old identity dies, a crucifixion occurs, so a new one can be born anew. End of quote. Our talk today is titled Easter Treat. I suggest that perhaps the greatest Easter treat has been the new lives we have experienced, speaking personally, I have experienced, following the crucifixions that, that we've all experienced, the new perspective. And as with, with our, our teenager Jeremy, they may not include candy, but they do provide a new way of living and experiencing life, don't they? I vividly recall my early on in my career at ComEd, attending lineman's school, because I wanted to be a lineman. Working on poles and towers, working outside, a guy's job, right? I really wanted to be a lineman. The training started on short poles that were only about 15 feet high and we learned how to strap on, they're called hooks, but they're really spikes that you strap onto your legs so you can climb up a pole by digging the spike in. And I'd reach the top of that short pole and I'd be doing the work and I loved it. It was physical work and you were accomplishing something. Then the day came that we had to do the work on top of a 35-foot pole. That's three stories up. And I had a fear of heights. I thought I could conquer my fear of heights because I wanted that job so badly. And I could not. I climbed up to about the 15-foot level and froze. I could not move knowing in my mind that ultimately I had to climb a 70-footer in order to pass. I failed out of lineman school. I flunked. I cried in front of the guys. I cried. And I felt like a failure. That was a crucifixion. In time, I was approached by management and... They invited me con to consider another position, figuring I'd fit into it rather well, and, and I did. And throughout my 33 years with the company, I climbed the ladder instead of the pole to reach a significant upper management position in the division, in the region. This is an example of a new life experienced following a crucifixion, okay? Now, that to me is an Easter treat. No candy, but a career of treats nonetheless. That's definitely an Easter treat. A new life, a new direction, unfolding in ways you never thought you could or knew that you would. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Now, for me, I took the Easter treat title a little bit differently. I took, it reminded me so much of hunting for that basket. But I thought, one of the things I love right now is I find metaphysical meanings in things that happened today. Mm -hmm. Or maybe a few years ago. I won't tell you how many. To me, the Easter 
hunt metaphysically kind of represents that journey to reconnect with my divine self. Just as you pointed out, it happens over and over again. Mm -hmm. And we hope it to. We want it to. We want to actually live it, that divine self experience 100% of the time. But I haven't gotten there yet. I don't know if you have or anybody else has. But I keep practicing. Finding your basket or that egg is the divine self feeling the joy of that moment the high, the rise of that moment is definitely a treat. When you're young, it seems to be so much easier because isn't it true? You see a little baby or a little child and, and they're like, they're entertained by the most, the smallest things. You hold them and you look at them and they smile and they laugh. I'm waiting for my grandson to start that stage. But it's as though they've already found the joy. They've already found, they're already experiencing that divine self and expressing it to you. It's like it's right there in front of them. It's so natural and it just comes so naturally. They don't have to struggle for it. They don't have to work for it or search for it. It just happens. It's so near to their consciousness, their current consciousness. It's in plain sight. And as they get older, don't, isn't it funny how they, they ask the most interesting questions? The ones that get you thinking and like, I, I don't know how to answer that. But there's something in them that knows to ask it. And sometimes they say the most profound things, like they'll say something so true and real that it stops you in your tracks and like, wow, I need to write that down. And then as we get older, as, as I watch them get older, as I get older, it's like, wait, it's, it seems to be a little bit harder to access that piece of myself. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more difficult. I have to look for it. I have to make more effort to get into that, to experience it. I have to sit down and and maybe the right outfit will do if I sit down and meditate. Maybe it's the right music or maybe it's the right pose. And I work a little bit harder to get the same experience that came so naturally as a kid. I mean, I remember as a really young girl kneeling next to my bed, talking to my angel, my guardian angel, and totally feeling a presence next to me. But I didn't feel that anymore after a certain age. Mm -hmm. It's like as I became more uh, acclimated to life and, and the expectations and the, cul the culture of living in family and the rules and the ideas that come with all of that, that some of those experiences, not just some, all of those experiences kind of left and got a little bit farther away. It used to be so easy when I was younger to go to bed, wake up, it's a new day. I don't even remember what happened yesterday. I don't remember what I ate. Well, that still happens. But today's a new day. Let's get up and play. Let's go outside. Let's run, ride bikes. But now sometimes I go to bed thinking about the day and it's still with me when I wake up the next day, still haunting me for me to do something about it. So then I go sit down to, to meditate to try and get back to that divine self so that I can like breathe again and feel that peace and, and find the answer of how to move forward. I found that as I got older, I had more places to work through, to think through, to look under, to, to talk about, so that I could even get to a quiet space in myself. It just became more elusive and frustrating. But, like my story, 
I have people around me that help me remember. I have classes I can take or workshops that I can be part of. And, and they remind me, oh, yeah, I love being in nature. That's where I'm going to go tomorrow and, and get back some of that peace, get back some of those spaces. Our master teacher walked his journey. He didn't do it alone. He did it in community with those around him. Why do I think that I have to do it by myself? I just pray that I don't follow the path that my oldest brother did and say, I'm not going to try. I'm not even going to try. I'll try a little bit. Ah, it's just too much. I'm just going to, no, it just is what it is. I don't really need that anyway. I'll just keep plugging through. This is a great place to find those moments, to be in community of people that support you knowing that those moments are there for you. It might take a little bit of time to sort through, work out, throw out, forgive, let go. In today's daily word, it says for Easter, through my Lenten journey, I heeded the call from my soul to recognize the stones in my consciousness and awaken to the infinite potential with, within me. I'd like to change one word in that whole quote. I'd like to change the words infinite potential to infinite reality. We have an infinite reality inside us, not just potential. We may not have tapped into it yet, but it's there, and it's everything you can imagine and more. Jesus' life journey culminated in the crucifixion and resurrection, the crossing out of the power of life experiences over him and claiming his infinite reality, the reality of who he was. And we can too. Each time I release, I forgive, I let go of the negative effects, the negative messages of my experiences in life, and recommit to being my best self, I return to the infinite reality of who I am. I have found my Easter basket when I do that, and the taste of those treats of joy and peace are beyond imagination. And they're low calorie. It's a good uh, description of a resurrection is letting go of the resentment and negative messages in our mind. I like that. Uh, quoting from an article by Harold S. Com, he says, the Easter experience is when you're traveling your life's road in a mountain lies directly in your path. Beyond the mountain is your heart's desire. You know, for me, my heart's desire was to be a lineman. The mountain was my fear of height. Your heart's desire, he says, may be an extraordinary vision or perhaps just a w wish that life goes on as it currently does. But he says, there's only a single road and you've traveled it as far as possible and now you can go no further, for in front of you is a solid mountain stretching before your path. My mountain was my fear of heights. Yet Jesus says, if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, we can move a mountain, right? <clears throat> but I said to the mountain, move. <laughs> I said, I can, I, can, I can do this, I can beat this. And it was still there just as it was. And the experience is common through loss or challenge. The more difficult the loss or challenge, 
the more difficult it is to move that mountain. But Jesus did not say how long it would take for that mountain to move. Only that it would move. And each mountain has its own time to move. As you walk down the hallway of this church um, and, and, and gaze out at the atrium, see some uh, stained glass windows with names upon them. There's 14, 14 of them. And they commemorate mem- members of our church who have made their transition to the next dimension. They've died. Now, myself and many of you knew every one of those people, every one of them. I think, uh, and it hurts. And each one was a crucifixion of loss to to those of us who knew them, and and all of us have experienced a loss, whether they're on that, those names are on those one of those placards or not. We've all experienced losses of of, of people and and perhaps creatures in our lives that were were dear to us, and it hurts. And one could see that herd as mountains that block the road forward. You know, what was will never be again. They're never going to come back in their original form. And the mountain will move, though, so we can continue that road of life without these people. It's called the grieving process. So the mountain moves, but it takes a while. And every now and then it reappears for a little bit, too. Just as a a fond memory of the legacy that they left us. The treats I personally have encountered on those roads are those fond memories of each of those individuals and experiences we had and the letting go of annoyances they brought to me too. Because we all bring them, don't we? It's funny, you know, it was just a few weeks ago that I realized the mountain of feeling like a failure that I experienced after flunking out of line school was merely a continuation of the failure that I felt and experienced as a 10-year-old boy in Little League Baseball. In Little League Baseball, the coach was trying to teach me when you're standing up there in the batter's box And that pitcher throws the ball toward you. Step into the ball and take a swing. Not me. I was afraid that freaking ball was going to hit me. I'd step away. They call it stepping into the bucket and take my swing. Ineffectively, I might add. And just as with my fear of heights that I would realize later in life, that fear of the ball couldn't be coached out of me. It just couldn't. I was afraid. The coach made it very clear that he was unhappy with me in front of all my teammates. I felt like a failure. That was the start of the mountain failure at 10 years of age that I have carried with me through my entire life. Every time I failed following that, including the line school, failing to be drafted for the Vietnam War, and other times I didn't make the grade, it just reinforced what a failure I am. My entire life since 10 years of age. Up until a few weeks ago in a personal growth course titled The Landmark Forum, I came to the realization that since being a 10-year-old, I haven't been trying, I have been trying to move that mountain by proving myself. Everything I did, including those activities I loved, I had to do them better than anybody else, and I had to do them perfectly. That was my goal. I remember teaching a class called Lessons in Truth when I was new as a minister back in, in Crystal Lake. There were like 10 people in the class and I'd hand out evaluation sheets. I got 10 tens, 10 perfect scores. And you know what I said when I read that? Well, it's about time. (laughs) (laughs) Everything had to be proved I'm not a failure. And you know what? Proving 
what you're proving you're not when in fact you are is really hard work. It's like moving a mountain with a shovel. You see, I was a failure. I had failed. I had given my best on a several number of different occasions. I didn't make the grade. So what? So what? I found the ability to move that mountain simply by accepting I did fail. I didn't have anything to prove as a result. That's all. That's all. And it took me over six decades to move that mountain. And now it's gone. Now I do things as I want to do them. If I don't do as well as I might, so what? So what? You're still going to show up on Sunday next week, right? You betcha I am. (laughs) Unity encourages us to be open to all teachings. That's how we give you the tools to realize who you are and to come come into life as your authentic self. Because you never know which teaching, which book you're going to open, which personal growth class, which meeting you're going to attend is going to provide you a lesson that you'll never forget and will change your life. I'm telling you what. That is sweet. And it's about as close to candy as you can possibly get. In closing, today may your Easter treats be in plain sight and easily accessible to you. (laughs) If there is a mountain showing up for you, may it come with a travel map, map to guide you through. May you cross out the effects of any difficult experiences. May you experience all the joy that the infinite feels about you. And may you express your joy with happy abandon. May you taste the sweetness of this resurrection day, a new life of unlimited blessings. Happy Easter. Let it be so. And namaste. Namaste. And as we have Joe joining us in our choir, um, I just wanted to tell you the song is called Rise, and it's Faith Rivera who does it. And I found the song at the end of last year, and I thought, I have got to do this song for Easter. But it's a big song, and I needed help. And I wanted to say how much I appreciate that all of these lovely people on on both sides of me, including George in the back, have all just stepped up so well to just make my dream my goal come true. Are you all ready? All right. I close my eyes. I open my heart. I take a deep breath. Let the healing start. I lift my hands. I plant my feet. Rise
Thank you, Unity Choir. Thank you so much for all of your work. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Do we have to talk now? <laughs> cool. Whew. That's awesome. One of my favorite songs. Get to my stuff. We got all mixed up here now. All right. The resurrection is coming. It is. I will rise to the occasion. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Okay. All right, it just got uh, caught up in the song. All right, so it is our time in our service where we gratefully and thankfully accept your donations, your tithes, your offerings. If you are online, please go to our giving, Joy of Giving tab and hold your gift in your hand right now. Just hold it in your hand. If it's not written out, hold it in your heart. Oh, thank you, God, for these gifts, these gifts that support this ministry, that hold this space open for gatherings such as today, for groups that meet and share the moments within these walls. Thank you for the gifts that move beyond these walls and help our community as well as our country. We are blessed in all that we hold in intention and in heart as we move in 
to this day feeling the joy, the gift, the Easter treat that is so sweet that we have been a part of and are creating a new moment of. Let it be so as we share these gifts here now. We hold them and say a very short prayer together, please. Divine My love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Amen. I want to thank you for your gifts. Everything that you give here is, is spent here and used for the groups that we support, the community that we live in, the mm, all we are self-supporting. So all that you do here helps to continue that. So thank you. We want you to know that we are grateful for your gifts and you as givers. So together, let's bless them three times with thank you, God. Thank, thank you, God. God. Thank, thank you, God. God. Thank, thank you, God. God. Amen. I have some announcements. Uh, Unity Spiritual Center is a ministry based in prayer. So if you would like a prayer, there is a prayer station over here just outside of the fellowship doors, doors which we will have some light refreshments today. Help yourself to coffee and a few things. Also, um, Jackie. Are you up for it? Okay, Jackie, our prayer chaplain, if you would like a prayer, a confidential prayer in the moment, she is here to help support you with that. Also, if you are interested in holding someone in the light in prayer, we have candles at the back end, the end of this aisle here, $2 a piece. We'll continue to burn those each Sunday until they are burned out. And we have classes. Please check out our website for these for more information if you're interested, classes and groups. The also, meetings and gatherings. We have our new membership meeting next Sunday following the service. You'll be partnering up with the two of us as we share all the things about this ministry that you might want to know, get all your questions answered. And you'll be a member before. You can choose to become a member. If you do, you'll be a member before our annual meeting, which is the first Sunday in May. So you have all the benefits of that. Uh, our fellowship and lunch with the ladies is at Oliver's next week on the square. At a, if they're going to wait for, till about 11.30 to meet over there. So if you are finishing up any kind of duties here, you can do that. Also, um, youth ministry is next week. So please bring your kids, grandkids, friends, neighbors, whomever you'd like to bring, that we'd love to have them. Earth Day is April 23rd. We will have a guest, special guest speaker that day. Um, also, openings. Uh, we have board openings. If you are interested, please talk to me or any board member here. They'd be happy to share information about that. We have our tech team opening to help with Sunday services. Anyone that would like to help on the board, and just give our, our tech, see, they're so multitasking, you know, they might need a little backup here. So, and then we have an opening for our landscape person. Okay, today, 
You can buy one of these beautiful Easter plants. Be sure not to get the silk ones there, but they're out here. <laughs> they're out front here. If you would like to buy one, please let me know. You can drop off. Um, it's a $20 to me or Mary, if you want to raise your hand, that they can drop that off to her as well. And take it home today and let it just continue your day with blessing. All right, I think that is about everything. Let's stand for our prayer for protection and our peace song. Together, please. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And so it is. Amen. You can hold hands if you can. Give it a go. Let's see what we can do here. shine this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine let it shine hide it under a bushel no I'm gonna let it shine hide it under a bushel no I'm gonna let it shine under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let hatred blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let hatred blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let hatred blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine Let it shine, let it shine Let it shine, let it shine Let it shine Happy Easter!